about the letter um W, we're talking about wine, we're talking about watches, we're talking about Andy Warhol, we're talking about whiskey. We are talking about um, alternative investments um, and what are alternative investments. Um, they are quite loosely um, investment opportunities that have no or only a small correlation with traditional financial markets. So do you want to own a luxury item? How can you own a luxury item? What returns do they provide? We're going to find out. I'm delighted to be joined by Tamer Osman, founder and chief executive of Mintas. Paul de Klerk is from a winemaking family and relationship manager at Cult Wines Investment. And Aurelio Paduca, who is co-founder and chief executive of Splint Invest, which invested in its first pallet of whiskey casks three years ago. So Tama, first up, Mintas allows investors to invest in multi-million dollar art. So what um, motivated you to create this offering? Was it sheer frustration about the returns that you were getting from other investments such as equities? Well, I, actually with me, it started with a bit of a, like a nerdy um, uh, kind of uh, infatuation with the technology. I was running this division at Microsoft, which was in AI and decentralized finance. And we start doing these projects for the financial industry. And then what technology started to do as far as kind of democratizing the way you can um, get into these assets, you know, pretty much like, you know, open my mind up. And Morgan Stanley, Oliver Wyman every year uh, releases his report about the trends for the next 10 years. And for the last four years, the four trends have not changed. These are alternatives, shared economy, tokenization, fractionalization, and ESG. So I started looking at, uh, should it be commercial real estate? Should it be um, uh, renewable energy? Then uh, I met with the CEO of Sotheby's uh, right before COVID. Uh, I flew to New York to meet him. It was a very epic uh, meeting, I would say. And then after he left uh, Sotheby's, he became my first investor and through him, um, I got into the art. But the interesting thing about art is it's a 1.7 trillion market. And each year, six to five billion dollars worth of art is uh, traded, and and not many people can buy a five million dollars painting. I mean, even if you have hundred million, you probably wouldn't put uh, five percent of it into a single painting. So as a result of that, the uh, paintings go amongst you know one very wealthy person to another very wealthy person. A lot of money comes into the uh, sector but they get bamboozled they put the painting i mean money into wrong things because it's very complex uh for example um andy warhol has this uh, series called jackie onassis series 400 paintings in the jackie o series 200 of them the eyes look up and 200 of them the eyes look down the ones looking up are 2.5 million dollars the ones looking down are four hundred thousand dollars so you could be sold one looking down for 2.5 and you're going to be looking down for the rest of your life I mean, because it's very complex. So with that, uh, the Mintus was designed in such a way we took all the structural limitations away from access, you know, valuation, governance, provenance and exit and brought some of the top people from the world. So actually you can own a, um, you can basically become a shareholder of a $20 million painting by only spending $3,000. And, and on top of that, we got the FCA and SEC authorizations, which are the two most difficult regulators. So we made it in a quite a gold-plated environment. So there is no um, kind of conflicts of interest. Everything is transparent. But interesting fact is um, that 65 billion, about 40% of that 65 billion is uh, acquired by institutions, family offices, uh, pension funds, um, uh, hedge funds and what have you. And usually you pay about 20 to 50% uh, commission when you buy it, about 10% commission when you sell it. Let's say average 30%, so $7.5 billion each year is kind of like left on the table. So I don't think this is about disruption. I think this is more about like how you can reinvent and open up this market that has been um, 
producing some amazing returns since 1986. And we're going to find out how people can, can get involved and how they can in, invest in Mintus. I suppose it's about the democratization of art ownership and similarly fine wines that we can only salivate over. So Paul, tell us about, um, well, first of all, the Screaming Eagle 1992 Cabernet sold for half a million dollars just eight years after it was bottled. Do you have any Screaming Eagles within your portfolio? Of course, yes. Screaming Eagle is part of the is part of the wines we invest in. It's probably the most expensive Californian wines, actually. So, uh, yeah, but fantastic quality. Um, the, the, the idea of cult wines, cult wines is about 15 years old. We The idea of cult wines is to help people don't necessarily understand anything about wine to be able to invest in the asset class that is wine. So we consider wine as an asset class and we have created a product that helps people to simply invest in. Um, so it's pretty simple. Our clients give us money. With this money, we purchase cases of fine wine for them. We also store, their for, store them for them. And uh, when it's time to exit, we also sell them for them. On average, the portfolios have returned roughly 9% over the last 15 years. So it's nothing really to compare with uh, a lot of other investments, if you think about Bitcoin and things like that. But it's actually, in, the, the volatility is much smaller. Uh, it's actually less volatile than gold. So it's just an alternative investment. It's something that is very nice to to consider when you have a, a broad portfolio of investments. and. I like to say as well that it's uh, much more fun than investing in bonds or equities or shares. Like you, you're actually investing in something that is physical, that it's enjoyable, that is great. Uh, so you mentioned storage there. How do you store your wine against acts of God and you know perhaps tremors from fracking, etc.? How do you make sure that there's no there's no theft or um, spillage or breakages? Well, um, again, we've been around for 15 years. We never had any issues with cult wines, like we're talking about theft exactly. Nothing happened. Basically, we have a very large warehouse that is about two hours west of London in a city called Draglow. And um, yeah, we have our 1.5 million bottles there. And so under one roof, we have about 3,000 clients all around the world, 300 million pounds worth of wine under one roof. And it's, it's here in the UK. Uh, even investors from, from India or from Australia will have their wine stored here. Um, nothing ever happened, but the, the management fee that we charge you yearly covers the insurance, covers the storage, covers the brokerage, entry, exit. It covers uh, absolutely everything. And, and it varies, obviously depends on the size of your investment with us, but it varies between 3 to 2% per annum. So Aurelio, when I looked at the um, the cult wine investment website, it said fine wines is an investment like no other. But I'm quite sure that you have plenty to say because on, on your website, when I had a look, there was watches, there was handbags, there was whiskey. So what is it that Splinters does and how can we access what you have? Yeah, well, maybe to start with, I fully agree with whatever. My colleagues just said alternative investments are a great asset category. Um, personally, I really I strongly believe about the importance of having a well diversified and balanced portfolio. And actually, that was also our motivation to start with Splint Invest because, as being an investor of my own, um, I realized at some point that I can invest with my salary, with my wealth, which was very, very like average. I can invest in ETFs, I can invest in stocks. But there is much, much more out there like art and wine. Unfortunately, it's not easy accessible for me. And um, this is how we started with Splint Invest. We built a platform where retail clients can invest fractionally in alternative investments. And we realized that it's not only art, it's not only wine, but it's, as you mentioned, whiskey, cars, handbags, watches, diamonds, um, forestry. It, it, the list is almost endless. And um, since we really believe in diversification to the fullest extent, it's not just diversifying into alternative investment one class, but seeing alternative investments as a class which should be further diversified in itself. So how do people get involved? Because I've seen in your website that you have splints. What is a splint? Yeah, actually it's a token on a Tezos blockchain. 
Um, it's a made-up word. Um, we tried to call it as split, <laughs> but somehow the sound is not so nice as split. And then we're thinking splint sounds nicer. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, it's very very easy to acquire a token. You don't even realize it's a, it's a token. So um, you download an app on an app store. You create an account. You verify your identity, and you can buy the tokens of the assets um, with a credit card. So it's really straightforward. So you mentioned a lot of luxury goods there. So how does it work? Do you go out, source it, buy it, show interest in it? Do you actually own it? Yeah, actually, that's a very good question. And um, the answer is no, we don't. We work with partners who have expertise like cult wines. So we actually work with cult wines. <laughs> because they're like a really um, good partner for wine investments. Um, but yeah, actually, they take care of everything. We are just a platform for investors to access it and manage it in one place rather than having 10 accounts for 10 asset categories. Okay, I'll go back to Tamar. So in terms of um, returns that investors have been seeing, the ones who are um, involved with you, are there any standout cases where... Um, someone's made an awful lot of money due to your... If you look at the data going back to 1986, uh, the art has uh, grown 37 times, uh, returned 37 multiples, whereas S&P did about 15 multiple. Uh, if you compare against gold and silver, it's 37 versus 2. So from that point of view, it's it's a remarkable, uh, remarkable returns. But you really have to know uh, what you are putting your money into. Uh, that is, I guess, the biggest trick. And the way uh, we um, design that is that we put this uh, private equity uh, great investment process uh, into the uh, platform. So what that means is that we get the paintings or buy the paintings from collectors or from artists directly uh, themselves. We don't go to galleries. We don't necessarily go to auctions. We guarantee sometimes, but we try to eliminate that fee in the middle. And then we have a very a unique AI platform uh, that we have built that gives us a kind of like a desktop research, goes back all the way to 1993, gets all the data about a, a price velocity of an artist. So we try to understand if that artist is going to move up or stay steady or go down. And then um, if the painting makes sense, uh, then we um, get a price from the seller. And then let's say the seller is selling the paint for hundred dollars, and um, and the AI tells us that it's a pretty good you know price. Then we put our management fee on top of that, which is two percent over seven years, so fourteen percent. So the price becomes hundred fourteen. And at that point, we go to three independent valuers: one in New York, one in London, one in uh, Switzerland. These are the top top valuers in the world, and we ask for auction estimates, which is the lowest valuation. And if the valuation is um, 15 to 20% above that 114, great. If it's equal, depending on the painting, it might be okay. But if it's below the painting, mean that either our markup doesn't um, uh, justify or the price is too high, we go back to the seller, to the collector or the artist and negotiate with them to either roll into the painting or take a percentage of our carry at the exit. So we present a, a case for them and then basically with that, we were able to achieve up to 20, 25% discounts uh, because of the price of art is very uh, opaque, very fluid. So with that, um, once we achieve that, uh, you know, 15% to 20% uh, potential uplift, then it comes to our investment committee. The investment committee is led by Brett Gorby, who is the global chairman of uh, Christie's. Um, he is the person basically start to contemporary art movement. And the investment committee gives us their opinion. Then we take it to an exit committee. An exit committee are the people that would sell that uh, painting. And that conversation is probably the most fascinating conversations uh, that I've ever been in my life coming from Microsoft. A lot of egos in the room. And the conversation goes all the way from, I wouldn't touch that painting with a 10-foot pole, even though the price is good to uh, buy that painting, I'll sell that um, at a 30% markup uh, in, in three weeks. So in a way, it becomes a very unique, dematerialized, um, you know, collateral asset you can buy and sell on the platform and then bring all the investors into it. So the exit is, you know, it's almost like the liquidity is there. And then with all that, um, it is quite fascinating because all those details, like the painting comes from a 
their house into a gallery, let's say in New York, um, and then um, uh, the um, uh, Providence people come in and they look at the painting if it's real, you know, does it have the right resume or not. Next day, the insurance people come in with their own, um, you know, experts. Um, you know, next day we bring another, you know, the uh, law firm that we work in New York, uh, Patterson Belknap is the most amazing experts in the uh, sector on the province. They bring there. So three different like experts kind of come in and then, you know, vet that. And then, and, 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 you know, the, you know, the painting gets, you know, videoed and what have you done, we put onto the platform. So all the kind of like these barrier to entry are taken out of the system. And the interesting is that the investor do not pay a management fee because that management fee is buried under the price of the painting. And then, uh, we take and, uh, carry at the end. So we're very much aligned, uh, with the, uh, investor in that sense. So it becomes a quite a, a fascinating process actually. So we've only got four minutes left, but if you can tell us what the minimum investment is and, and how people can get involved. So you can come through mintus.com. It's $3,000 uh, minimum investment. And then, or you can come through one of our Luxembourg or Cayman vehicles, which invest across the platform. And the minimum there is $100,000. Okay, $100,000. Paul, what is the minimum investment? How do people invest in Cup One investment? investment is 25k pounds and I mean we have a, a wide range of investors with us our biggest investors have more than four million pounds invested so yeah and the the types of returns that they've been achieving since the the company was founded again roughly around nine percent per annum um, this is pretty much what we are seeing at the moment and 2021 seems to be heading that direction as well uh, last year we did plus 12, which is very good if you compare it to S&P 500, for example, that did minus 15. But um, yeah, this is the type of returns you can expect in wine. It's it's something that is very stable, very steady. And um, it, I mean, it's probably the case for both of the other investments as well. But it's, uh, it's something that is very interesting about fine wine investment is that it is... Um, there's no capital gain tax capital gain tax applied to to fine wine investment so it's considered as a wasteable asset in the UK i don't think um, i would be wasting any of the uh, screaming eagle um aurelio i'm worried because um alternative investments when they become popular they become traditional investments over time so at the moment the three of you are talking about the democratization of ownership for luxury goods but what happens when the wealth managers um sort of clock on to the fact that this is really cool and will luxury items become the domain and the preserve of the rich again and in fact those of us who don't have a hundred million pounds can we can we still get involved or are you there for the masses and not just for the wealth managers? Well, I mean, uh, the way why we call it alternative from my perspective is because of the low correlation with traditional markets. Um, at some point it will become mainstream, hopefully, which is the right thing. And this will for sure diminishing returns. <laughs> I mean, this is like basic economics. We can't change these rules and um, mechanisms. But I still believe that like historically returns on like wine, art, whiskey were extremely high, like 30-40% per annum. I think this is not sustainable, but still having a nice return of like 5-15% to 15 on a very stable level with low volatility is a nice thing. When it comes to, is it available for everyone? I mean, that's what we really, really want to achieve. Um, that's why with us, the minimum investment is 50 euro or pounds, not 50k, really 5 to um, <clears throat> which um, doesn't make it like less interesting because you can go up to 10 million portfolio with Splint Invest. But if you don't feel comfortable with testing a new asset category straight away with 50K, you can test it with 2K, see how the portfolio is developing after six months. And if you like it, if you like the liquidity on the secondary market where you can trade your fractions, if you trust the platform, you can increase your portfolio constantly. One word answer. If you could own anything that you have on the portfolio, what would it be? Honestly, we just acquired a McAllen collection, the Six Pillar collection. Um, I saw it physically. I, I think, yeah, I, I would choose that one. <laughs> what would you own if money was no object? 
um, Missini Lagoire. That's one of the finest wine in the world, if okay. not the finest. Okay, if you hear of one going missing, you know who's got it. Tamer? Uh, we have a condo on the platform. It's uh, 198 centimeters by 254. Um, I'd love it, but we would have to buy a new house first uh, because we don't have enough uh, full space to you know, <laughs> hang that painting, but I would probably buy that one. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. The 20 minutes we knew wouldn't be long enough, but um, look for these three gentlemen. They will be wandering around. Grab them. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of your day and download the app. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.